what we got from our SMC family out there, mashaAllah everybody's uh, doing lots of khidmat, lots of service. Please uh, continue to support the SMC site, the charity sites, the uh, sharing of the pages, sharing of everything that we don't have uh, outside government helping us, just our own community. So if the community supports alhamdulillah and if they don't it's not an outside government that supports these, these programs, these uh, intelligence, these realities that we're trying to put together. So it requires the support of all of our people to come together and, and to make things happen. Alhamdulillah that the AI is operating, I think we moved off of ChatGPT and onto our own platform that they're trying to develop. and. Uh, so alhamdulillah lots of people testing it, lots of people having uh, wonderful experiences and it's uh, extremely costly. Every, every message that comes out has a cost to it so inshaAllah people that can support inshaAllah open their hearts to support and the, this is just the first phase of it to come out, has to roll out and, and to be much more advanced eventually entering into our emails and answering our emails and then into the app and integrated with the app. So alhamdulillah lots of great things and uh, lots of information and knowledge is inshaAllah that become available to people uh, on demand inshaAllah. What do we got out there? As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Thank you so much for Shaykh AI, it has been really helpful. Alhamdulillah. Sayyidi, if our meditation is weak, is there anything specific we can do to increase the connection? Keep practicing. Ask the AI, it will give you the more detailed and eloquent answer inshaAllah. Keep making your connection, do all the practices, do everything we, we just described and uh, continuous battle. Meditation is never weak, it's, it's my ability to do meditation is weak, the meditation is very powerful. But if I'm not able to fight the desires and, and fight the temptations and, and fight shaitan for the time and that has to do with uh, my ability to fight. So I have to increase my commitment and uh, my resolve. Are you donating? Are you giving of service? Are you doing everything that make you to be committed? Once you're so committed and you did everything you're gonna fight for the time to sit and make your tafakkur. But if we don't do any of those things then you say, oh I don't need to do tafakkur now. It's again of course that you didn't really sort of put in administrative fee, you didn't do anything for it. So the meditation's powerful, I'm just not there yet because shaitan playing with me. So we have to take ourselves to that point in which we're really vested in it, we put a lot of time into it, we gave food out, we did services, we did khidmat, we did all these things. I'm going to make a way in which you know after fajr I'm going to sit and I'm going to connect my heart, after maghrib I'm going to connect my heart. Not zor and busy work time, just leave that alone. It's after maghrib, it's after asr if you're at home, it's after fajr and you're going to have a strong tea and not say that you fell asleep because you're going to sit on your knees until you have pain and you pass out from pain. So you have to do all of these steps so that you can fight shaitan from putting you to sleep, fight shaitan from making you to not be dedicated to find the time. So that's the great battle that Prophet described, this is the great jihad. Just to fight myself to reach towards the Divine, the Presence inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, cigarette smells bad and we really detest it, but nowadays vaping actually smells pretty good, it smells like fruit. Is this bad? What? Vaping if it's bad? Vaping smells good. Yeah, that's probably shaitan's way of uh, deceit because deception is coming. <laughs> Yeah, the vaping they say is uh, at least thousand times worse than cigarette smoke because of the amount of, uh, of cold negative energy can enter deeper and crystallize into the lungs to kill the servant faster. And all of this is satanic progeny. Cigarettes have to do with the shaitan, what they call carcinogenic elements has to do with the 
evilness, very, very bad evilness. So that has to do with entering into the lungs which are the tree of life. Through those tree of life nafas rahmah and the qudra of Allah enters the servant. So shaitan wants to destroy that vehicle that gives power to the soul. You know when the breath of the believer has like a fire upon the soul to bring out an immense energy. Shaitan wants to kill that right away. Wherever they could uh, ban the cigarettes then they tried to bring out the vaping and, and the cold, cold smoke but much more toxic, much more dangerous. See and not all the things that come out good smelling, we talked about fragrance and you know, known fragrances. Somebody could say, you know, this fragrance smells good but it's not. Nakma champa and Hindu fragrances are not good. They're infused with, with different types of jinn. So we're talking about Islamic fragrances, fragrances that have been authorized by Prophet traditional fragrances that have a power of enlightenment and energy. And Isban is also mentioned as a cleansing, it's from a leaf in paradise and that when that burns these shayateen they can't breathe that air and they have to run from the environment because that's their, that's their breath and their lifeline is through breath. If you can affect their breathing then their entire energy is set, they have to run from that environment. So Isfahan is very powerful in, in cleansing an area and cleansing an environment inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh. Walaykum As Salaam wa What could be done when energy level is being raised but it is depleted by external forces beyond one's control? You have to have your own energy force beyond one's control which would be your madad. So as soon as you have a life of madad and making your connection then there's nothing beyond your control because you have an… Uh, uh, like a bubble of energy around you which is the madad and the support of the shaykh. That's the whole concept of the madad is that uh, I walk with the madad of my shaykhs, their energy is all around me and actually it caused difficulty for other people. But when my energy force is not strong then their energy causes difficulty for me. So you have to change the, the formula and that then requires a strong madad, it's not your own energy that helps you and, and it has to be the madad of the shaykh that's always with you, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Please forgive us in advance as we feel the question isn't as advanced as the recent teachings but since we started meditating with you, our anxiety about ongoing and upcoming external signs of Armageddon have gone done and have felt an inner himma to do good at the present moment. Is this similar to the timeless reality of Imam Mahdi and how a student can accompany the holy soul by doing good deeds under the blessed ban under your blessed banner? Yeah, yeah the reality of anxiety has to do with an awareness the soul has, awareness and depression. Right? Depression and anxiety have to do with the issues of the soul. When you address the issue of the soul then these two can become diminished. What happened in the past is not your problem. Through your meditation, through your practices you made your peace, life's gone on, Allah opened the door to where you are now so this is an opportunity that you have to take. So the depression diminishes, what's it to be depressed about? Anxiety is then what's happening in the future. So when we're not connected and we don't have a spiritual connection I would imagine everybody's anxious because they don't see what's coming behind you know curtain number one. As soon as you meditate and have a connection with the shaykhs and the meditation is strong you have a sakina that Allah puts into your heart that Allah has to put that, the sense of peace into your heart that you're following Allah's command, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. 
if you follow Allah's command there should be a peace and tranquility within the heart. The Rabbi did my best, I followed your command, I follow them, I listen to the teachings, I'm doing my tafakkur, I do my charity, I go out and do my life of khidmat, the rest is in your hands. If you want me back then alhamdulillah I come back to you. If I'm supposed to survive these difficulties then alhamdulillah I'm under your shield and umbrella. So this gives us sakina, what we call a peace because we feel the umbrella because you know we said, how do you know how much Allah loves you? Well how much do you love Allah? That should be a direct reflection of how much Allah loves you. How much do you love Allah So I love Him a lot, really? How much do you do for Allah very little and then okay I don't think that's love. You say, no I'm trying my best, I do everything that gives sakina. Ya Rabbi I'm trying the best that I possibly can, I know I can do more, inshaAllah give me strength and himmah to do more. This gives us the, the peace and tranquility in our heart because the soul feels like we're doing the best we can, the rest is in Allah's hands. And that's what's important in these days. And that's the importance of the meditation, go out and do service, go out and be charitable, do everything possible and the rest is in Allah's plan. And we feel it, we feel that we did the best that we can, we inspire other people to do the best that they can and, and we live a life of hope and love and respect. So what then to be worried about inshaAllah, Allah is great and has the best of plans and inshaAllah that plan to encompass us, our families and our loved ones and community inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, after the vaccines seems like many have lost the five senses, became earthly, lazy, obese, eating, sitting, wasting time, not earning, how to combat this? Yeah I think this is after the fact from all the talk, so this were things that you know was an intention, beyond that many people are dying and many people are having arrhythmia and heart uh, difficulties. They put out a report now many pilots have, uh, have uh, many heart difficulties, many heart uh, problems, they don't want to report it because then they can't fly and they won't have their license. So they're trying to pass regulations that lower what the reporting standards would be. So I think many people are affected by something that uh, they were coerced into take, to taking and, and thinking that would help them. So these are the effects that shaitan put upon this creation and, and, and all that shaitan wants is to destroy humanity. So follow guidance and really follow guidance inshaAllah. So that the, this is just the first round, the next round that comes out I'm sure would be much more intense and much more difficult. And those that were forced to do it then under the, the laws of oppression Allah listens to the du'a of those whom are oppressed and that they continuously make the du'a of Imam, the qunut of Imam Shafi I believe we relieve, we released. And the immense hikmah of why that's in our fajr because that du'a qunut of Imam Shafi is immensely powerful on the subject of being oppressed. And those whom were oppressed and forced to take it for work and forced to take it by their, their governments, then the, this is the du'a of the oppressed in which Allah answers and heals and, and gives remedy to those whom were oppressed. If they use it as a ta'weez then you know you, you, you make the bed, you, you sleep in the bed. So that's the thing in the realities of guidance is to follow guidance and, and follow guidance on, on dark nights so that they illuminate a path for us towards safety and, and towards the, the love of Allah and love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the love of uh, Ulul Amr inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa MashaAllah beautiful graphics and video about cats, is there, is there an adab? How to name these cats? Is it bad adab to give cats holy names? Yeah, I wouldn't put too holy because these are animals so you don't want to disrespect holy people. But you can put holy places and uh, yeah, 
think of something creative and, and something but not, not very, very holy names of people because this is the owner for mankind, you name your children. So those, those are different. So you try to be a little bit more creative with your cat than naming what you would name your child, inshaAllah. But uh, yeah, alhamdulillah lots of uh, wonderful images are coming out and we uh, please that whoever puts out an image put the SMC logo on the image, either in the background, on the clothes of the people so that you know uh, Sufi meditation didn't do that. And it's probably the most plagiarized and most uh, copied images on the internet with the, the Sufi community. They took all the images, took all of the artwork and put it all on their own websites and do whatever they want with it. But this time around we, we're not going to go that way. So make sure that any image that people put out, any graphics they put out, any AI they put out is to go back and put the SMC logo on these characters so that wherever it goes and anyone wants to share it, everyone knows that it's coming out of SMC inshaAllah that way. If they feel the urge to share it they can't cut us out of it. And the, the credit comes back to the organization, the group and all the families that are supporting and, and trying to, to keep the way inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi you had mentioned in your talks that the owners of the kingdom are those who shine like a lamp through good characteristics where then we plug into the Divinely outlet. What if you spread hope and love to people and have good character but you feel like it's not enough and begin to have self-doubt but you keep trying, does that have to do with not being in the right place where you are, not being valued and does it take away from the Divine outlet? Forgive me if this doesn't make sense. No worries, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> the, 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 the understanding was that, that we have to live a life of lamps, so our life is to give out light. So if you're the most favoured lamp Allah ever created and that's what you claim then alhamdulillah give out light, say, no I, I electrocute people then that's not a lamp, that's not the, anything from the heavens. And everyone tries their best to be luminous, give out good character, give out food, water, all of those are considered giving out light because we give out hope. You know that when you touch a person and give them water, food, you touch their hearts, not touch the person physically but to touch somebody's heart is that you thought of them and that you, you brought food and sustenance or you, you sent out a message and somebody came to guidance, it touches their heart and that's what it means to be a lamp is to continuously serve. Now in our consciousness when we sit and meditate and think that, I have so much time and I gave like only five minutes away in Allah's way, then yes I would imagine you could feel a little bit nervous that maybe I'm not really doing all that I could be doing. But you know if you did what you can then alhamdulillah the rest of you, you try to do better the next day and the better the next day but yeah if, you, if you're sitting on a, a huge amount of time and you don't give more than five minutes everybody has to do their own accounting. What Allah gave to them and what are we using in Allah's way? And that's what's important when we do the most that we can, the best that we can then alhamdulillah Leave, leave it at that and inshaAllah give us more himmah to do more, to, to spread more and to share more and to, to give out food and to, to give out hope and all of these things that the shaykhs have asked of us, we try our best inshaAllah. So it's everybody has to do their own muhasaba, their own accounting. When they sit with themselves and their Lord and they understand what they have and what Allah has given to them and did they give that in the way of Allah if not then that they're accountable themselves, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah A lot of people are now also suffering from vertigo. Is it also because of our lack of balance on our senses? Yeah it could be many things but a lot of that shaykh has to do with all these things that people were taking, thinking it's okay, it's okay and you, you people are too critical. But no it wasn't okay. 
what people were given was not okay. Especially when we said, if you don't understand the game then you don't know who's playing and, and how you're being played. So the game for, for awliya and those whom are under the authority of awliya is to reach the Prophet that's it, there's no one else on that side. It's how to reach to Sayyidina Muhammad The other team is how to shaitan to take people to Jahannam, there's no third team. There's only people standing in the middle of the field and we said the grey would go, right? There's not another field where you can say, oh, I, I thank you I just saw your video but I'm like standing on the sidelines. It's not, you're in the game, you just may not know you're in the game. And people who thought they were in the grey, they were just standing in the middle of the field hoping they won't move and nobody will know. But we said the grey is going, so what happens? Is either you're moving the way towards Prophet or you're moving towards Jahannam because the shaitan will influence the person more, will give them to do this more and before you know it they're moving in that direction. And that, that's a part of the difficulties that people you know when they, they didn't listen and they had to put all these things upon them and they keep going and taking another thing and then they, they take this and they listen to that and they eat that and they eat this and they, they take the guidance from the box and not the shaykh. Then you know people believe more in, in the, the dunya authorities and not the heavenly authorities. That becomes a big danger and as a result what happens? <clears throat> they become sickened, they become uh, uh, affected, the body functions are affected, everything is affected because everybody is, is, is under difficulty. So this is the time even more, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu amanu, all you who believe Allah even says, believe again because belief is going to be much more difficult because we said it's like hot, uh, hot coal in your hand. I don't think anybody feels their faith is hot coal in their hand yet. Except the people who are trying to keep the sunnah, trying to keep the way, trying to keep the understanding when everything around them is telling, oh you, you people are foolish, take this, eat this, drink this, don't worry everything will be good, it's not good, it's not good, everything's not going to be good. Two years later they say, oh yeah it wasn't really good, I think we have a lot of problems. So we told you, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Regarding the senses and to keep the body clean, is it recommended to do hammam and sauna weekly? Sorry for the servant's bad adab. Yeah. Are you talking about hammam in your home or going to a public hammam with you know a whole bunch of people? No. It's ill advised to do anything in public, so all these things have to be done at home. Because even the gathering in a mall, you know you're going to pick up an immense amount of energy. So anywhere where people are you know releasing energies, well, that's the last place that somebody wants to be. But to, to sweat, you buy a device for your home or for your living environment, yes to sweat out bad character and to, to wash and to cleanse oneself, this is all uh, you know the way of Prophet so anything we do in the means of keeping ourselves ritually clean and washed and purified, alhamdulillah. We say even for taking away bad energy, when you come home from work the reason why your feet smell is from dunya. So you have to put your feet in the water with salt so that to pull the dunya and the bad energy of people that you've been around. So these are practices have to be done, if not then imagine those bad energies stay with you. Then they calcify and enter into the body, move up the system, move up the legs, move up all the way into the back and begin to cause back pain and back problems. So the smell it gives you a warning sign. <clears throat> so when you spiritually train, let's say in spiritual training you could walk somewhere and <clears throat> immediately a very bad smell past you, nobody's there. Why? Because those beings they release their waste through their skin but they don't show themselves from the unseen but they release their waste from their skin so they have horrific smells. 
But for the trained they can see the environment and begin to smell all around, there's just bad smells. So we said from the smell reality it has a warning for us, where their smell is related to energy. That's the only reason why something smells bad. So what, why, what is creating a smell? It means bacteria, energy, negativity. So then that has to be treated. So to s absorb the feet in salt and to pull the energies out, to shower when you come home from work, to pull the energies off, to, to do all of these things, to put salt into the shoe, disinfect you know and spray because these are bad energies. So all of this system has its own uh, alarms. So the ones who become sensitive and understand then the struggle for smell, they begin to understand how important smell is and how to monitor you know smell. So they can smell the body if there's a wound because the body releases a smell. That's why animals and dogs can smell a disease. People are like astonish, oh it's amazing this dog smells diseases because they have a hyper alert smell. As a result of their smell they can pick up where something is either dying or negativity is attacking it. If a negativity attaches to someone and begins to create an ulceration, external people only see an ulcer. An internal person will see there's an energy attached to your hand that's causing this and rotting and making this smell to come, the animal sees it, smells it. So the animal can come and begin to smell, so they use animals now for detecting smells on the body that detect sicknesses before they could even detect it with their modern equipment. So but the reality of smell has to do with the immense reality of energies and angelic realities. So when we fine tune ourselves to smell, smell becomes very important. That we keep ourselves always in an environment that smells good and brings happiness and, and brings a, a alertness and all of this reality and as a result then you're fine tuned and you pick up smells that are not right. You know people enter into an environment they have all sorts of markings on them but the smell is much more horrific because of all the negativity that's around people nowadays. So that's when they have the proof that the way of the shaykhs is, is, is a very verified way. They don't talk in philosophy. They talk by experience, they smell people, they can identify energies of people. So yeah, it's a very real system, we just have to enter into it and, and understand inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Does the bad energy also transfer to us if we work remotely and only interact through video chat? Is it as bad? Why would it stop? We have talks that teach you that it goes through your TV, goes through your radio, everything has an energy. You turn on bad sounds, there are now bad energies coming with incantations and curses. You watch something bad, energies coming in bad. You chat to people, the energies coming through. Those jinns they don't… Uh, they're not refined, they're not uh, limited or held back because of location. They move through anything. So that's why wherever we are in life we fortify, we have taweez, we keep ourselves in wudu before we enter into any chat, keep your taweez on, keep your taweez in your home and we're in a continuous spiritual battle. Not to run away from things but to keep yourself completely fortified. You have your taweez, you have your spiritual practices, you make sure you always have wudu, you prayed your salat and wudu, you get on your chat, you do your work. And you don't know what type of energy somebody has and what kind of shaitans are going to jump through them and into your screen and into your home. Our life is a, a spiritual battle at all times. So you, you don't ever put your guard down, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam wa rahmatullah. So then should we avoid shows and movies that have paranormal activity? I don't know if you want to avoid them if they're super real, super scary, yeah those things may enter into your home and you don't have the ability to get rid of them. 
unless you're, you're putting a lot of salawats in the house, a lot of dhikr in the house and there's taweez is all in that room. But no doubt if somebody is saying watching a show called Cursed and it's all about cursed people and uh, showing you their real faces then that's heavy. You know real killers and their faces, real criminals and their faces, everything in them is coming through the screen. But if you was a cartoon, no it's not any real being. So the, the real ones are the ones to be very wary about. When there's a real story, a real documentary, real event that happened then you capture that person with that being inside them. So that's the difficulty, that's why we say, watch the shaykhs, what happens? The shaykhs come through, their energies come through, the positivity comes through. Well, what about the shaitans? They're trying to do the same thing but in, in, in a thousand times more. So the shaitans broadcast you know, their sobats to 10 million people, the shaykhs broadcast their sobat to 10,000 people. And they, they're trying to derive an energy too, they're trying to send their nasty violent energies into everyone's homes to watch them. So you have to determine how and what level you can understand and to protect yourself from and your home from and and you have taweezes in that room and you play salawats in the house and all of these things for protection inshaAllah. Burn isfan. So all of these things that we, we teach you have to try to use them all the time. All the teachings for us and for everyone to remember is like a tasbih, you have to put them all together. But if you go home and cut the rope of your tasbih and say, I have a bunch of beads in my pocket shaykh, we have to string it and put it onto one thing and understand that everything he's teaching they're all connected. It's not just a bunch of beads in my pocket but I have to string it like it's one nice tasbih and you'll find that this teaching and this teaching are all connected. But if you keep all of our teachings in your pocket just with a bead and no string then you don't know which bead to pull out, which bead are we talking about today but they're all connected. How you wash, how you have taweez, how you have isfan, how you do your muraqabah, how you do your ears, how you do your seeing, how you do everything, all is on this one bead of whatever he's taught. As he teaches put it on a string and say, this is all interconnected. He has a curriculum he teaches and that curriculum is based on these seven, eight books. Now the ne next book is coming out are the six powers of the heart which are important for the openings of the heart and the movement of haqiqat al tai and for the ability for Sayyidina Mahdi to move people and these openings and these realities to come upon people, they have to at least be trained within it. So inshaAllah that book coming out in, in very near future. But all of them are in a curriculum, how to energy, how to meditate, what's the reality of hajj because that teaches the reality of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah which is significant. And still people don't know, I would say 99% of people don't understand at all that you know the reality of, of Allah is a hidden treasure. It's not you go to Mecca you thought you, you, you uncovered the greatest reality, oh I found Allah, no, no you didn't because Allah is hidden in Medina to Munawwara in the heart of Prophet Medina is more powerful, much more important, much more significant. Every reality is based on Medina to Munawwara and the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad But you don't understand that if you don't read the realities of the Hajj. So everything's based on a curriculum so that the seeker can understand where the secret is, where the reality is and to run to the presence of the sultan so that you can be authorized and uh, to take the hand of the sultan to be dressed and la hawla wa la quwwata the hawla or help and no power can reach the servant if the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad is not upon them. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans 
We have now five bands, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.